In this video, I'll be showing you a game that is unknown to many, but truly a hidden gem. Reason, an unknown gem. Reason takes place in a world where humanity banished their gods from existence, which had the consequence of also releasing the formerly imprisoned titans to wreak havoc on the world, with the mainland and coastal islands now literally turned apart by violent earthquakes and storms caused by the titans, there is one island that seems to be protected from the ensuing devastation. The island's hosts are small harbor town by Don Esteban, but with the arrival of the warrior of the Inquisition, led by Inquisitor Mendoza, who have come to investigate the circumstances around the island, the Inquisition has basically taken over the city and forced Don and his men to retreat into the swamp. You play as a nomeless stowaway on a ship found for the island who washes ashore after the ship is attacked and subsequently wrecked by a titan. Starting on the beach with nothing more than the clothes on your back, you set out to explore the island, soon find yourself wrapped up in the mystery of uncovering what lies at the heart of the volcano keep at the center of the island and saving the island from its eventual destruction. But there's also the Holy Flame, which is a literal source of magic, that the mages have built their monastery around it as a means to protect it. With the island somehow being protected from the violent storms ravaging the rest of the world, likely as a result of whatever strange magic seems to radiate from the heart of the island, the story is initially about discovering the source of the strange magic and ultimately finding a way to stop it once you realize that unleashing it could prove disaster for the island. After getting out of the wild beach at the beginning of the game, you encounter a small arbor man living alone on his house. The arbor man informs you that if you follow west, soon you will find yourself in the swamp surrounded by Don Esteban's men. On the north side, you will find the monastery that the mages have built it to protect the holy flame. And if you follow east, you will find the city that expelled the Don's men. The story has four chapters and you spend the entire first chapter exploring the island and subsequently joining a faction, which is something you do entirely on your own initiative with no story element driving any of that action forward. The two factions are painted in a moral grey area, where there is no clear right or wrong. Both sides will try to badmouth the other and convince you that their faction is the one with the noble intentions, and both sides really do make a reasonable argument in their own favour. The Don's men have been wrongfully exiled from their own town and are supposedly looking out for the good of the townspeople who are being repressed by the Inquisition martial law. While the Inquisition are trying to look out for the island's safety by keeping everyone in town and keeping the monsters spewing from the ruins at bay, ultimately it's up to you to decide which faction, story and ideology you believe the most. As an RPG, stats and skills are pretty important to your character development, and you get a variety of different fields to invest skill points in. Starting with combat, you have three melee combat specializations, Axe, Staff and Sword. Magic skills, Rune Magic, Crystal Magic and Scroll Writing in addition to basic stats like Strength, Dexterity and Mana. You can also spend your skills learning crafting skills like Blacksmithing, Alchemy, animal skinning and prospecting. Thieving skills like sneaking, lockpicking, acrobatics and pickpocketing. Don Esteban's bandits are basically the melee combat specialists. The mages have access to both crystal and rune magic, and the warriors of the order are sort of a hybrid with access to crystal magic but not rune magic. It's also nice that every skill in the game is legitimately useful as there isn't any dump stats or skills you should obviously avoid due to them being straight up inferior to other options. If you learn a skill, it will be significantly useful to you later on. Leveling up feels pretty rewarding since it takes actual time and effort to improve your character enough to tackle tougher enemies, and progression is based more on your decision making as a player than your abilities as a character. World design and exploration have always been Piranha Byte's greatest strengths as developers, and it's here that they succeed once again with reason. 
The side field provides an excellent middle ground between being large enough to offer open world freedom and the possibility to simply get lost within the world, while also being small enough that exploring it is actually manageable since it's easier to keep track of where you have been and have not been, and it doesn't overwhelm you with too many options at one time. You're free to go anywhere you want on the island right from the start of the game, except for some of the bigger older temples which are restricted by the magic barriers until later in the story, but the reality is you won't be strong enough to go certain places until you level up and get better stats and equipments to handle more difficult enemies. The map isn't designed to be done in any sort of sequential order. Exploring the world and figuring out what you can do in it has a pretty organic feel to it where you learn things naturally through your own curiosity and determination. Not because the game is guiding you towards certain areas, it feels great when you can explore any place and not being told by the game it's restricted. The island physical design does a great job of creating alluring places to explore which are pretty satisfying to discover on their own, thanks to its twisting pathways and mountainous heights. The combat gameplay kinda resembles Dark Souls combat but without a stamina meter. It's a fun and satisfying leveling system since the combat changes and evolves over the course of the game as you put points into the combat training. If your timing is off, the attacks slow down considerably and you become more likely to get interrupted or to have an enemy dodge out of the attack. Likewise, landing hits and avoiding attacks involves careful positioning to make sure you're close enough to land hits or far enough away to avoid hits. Ultimately, it's a pretty active system that requires a lot of personal skill to execute the controls just at the right times. Once you learn the telegraphs of your opponent, the fight is simply a matter of executing attacks and dodges with the right timing and positioning. The magic system consists of three spells, the fireball, magic bullet and ice lens. As a magician, you gain access to rune magic which allows you to cast spells like telekinesis, levitation, transform into natalis, healing, light, speed and so on. But these are mostly utility spells that help you interact with the world and are easily replaced by scrolls by non-mages. The only combat related rune spells are two buffs that boost your melee strength and damage resistance. The transformation into Ash, Beast spell, Summon Skeleton spell and the Inferno spell. These last three are decently interesting. The most interesting aspect about the story probably has to be the presentation of Mendoza as the villain, in the sense that he's not a conventional villain. Mendoza actually has noble intentions in trying to save the world and stop the other titans, which is more that can be said about the other faction leaders, since Don Esteban has more selfish goals with regaining control of Arbertown while fattening his wallet with gold from the temples, and Master Ignatius and the rest of the leaders in the monastery would rather not get involved as they only want to focus on protecting the Holy Flame. Mendoza starts out as a good guy trying to fight a titan, and seems to be the only person on the island in any interest in trying to stop the threat that the titans pose to the rest of the world. It's just that he's willing to sacrifice the entire island and everyone on it to do so. The voice acting in the game is surprisingly good for the time. They do a really good job with their lines. The facial animations are pretty mediocre, even for 2009 standards, but the characters are brought to life extremely well by their voice actors. I certainly have some complaints with reason. The magic system is too streamlined, melee combat is a little frustrating, there could have been more environments on the island and most notably, the second half of the game feels underdeveloped and could have benefited from having more content and story twists. But otherwise, from its world design and atmosphere to its quests and characters, the leveling system and character progression is enough to put Reason on a pedestal and sing its praises.